Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to Mentor Monday. Mentor Monday is your weekly microdose of encouragement, inspiration, and miracle grow on your potential as a coach. If I sound a little bit hoarse, it's because, well, we just finished our weekend boot camp. We did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I want to welcome all of the new coaches that went through training and certification this past weekend. It was a phenomenal group, an international group, as it always is. About 25% of our students at Life Coach Training Institute are outside the United States. Um, but they're, tr they're truly a global group of people. And so amazing group of people, very passionate, very dear to my heart after spending the whole entire weekend with them. A lot of hours and a lot of work, so I applaud them. Do me a huge favor. You see this right here? Um, I'm over here in the studio. I can't see you. So do me a huge favor. Jump inside the chat if you're on YouTube or jump in the comments on Facebook and let me know you're here. Tell us where you're joining us from and what you're excited about. And most importantly, well, this is a Q&A. So I need your questions. So throw your questions in the comments and in the chat. And I'm going to do my best. We've already got a lot of questions, but I'm going to do my best to get to everybody's questions that I possibly can in the limited time that we are together with one another. Let me say hello to a couple of people who are saying hello to me. Charlotte joining us from Illinois. Good to see you, Charlotte. Grace is saying hello to us. She's joining us from Oregon. You can't hear me? Uh, let's see. Let me look at my sound over here. You can't hear me? It looks like it's working. Um, Harvey is saying hello to us. Good to see you, Harvey. Sandy is saying hello to us. She's joining us from New Jersey. Joan's joining us from Bakersfield. Good to see you, Joan. Um, I think that my sound is working for everybody else as much as I can tell. Um, so, yeah, I think that we're doing good. So, anyway, well, cool. Well, like I said, I've got a lot of questions to uh, to answer tonight already. But do me a huge favor and let me know that you are here. Just keep that chat going. Also, do me a huge favor. Like this post and share it. It tells Facebook and YouTube that we're doing a good job. That gets it visible to other coaches who are looking for help. So hopefully with that little water, we'll be able to go for a little bit and answer everybody's questions. Oh, see a few more comments coming in. Let me see if I can get to those really quick. Brian's joining us from Colorado. Very good. Uh, KGB2639. Good to see you. Rachel from Michigan. And Rachel says that they can hear me. Awesome. Uh, and I'm seeing some of the names that were from boot camp this weekend. If you had fun at boot camp this weekend, let us know. Uh, it was a, an exciting weekend. I, again, I'm still recovering. So if I sound a little bit hoarse, or sound like I'm going through puberty all over again because I'll probably crack at times. Uh, that's actually the reason why. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's jump into some questions that we had sent in ahead of time. And here's the first question. I'm planning to approach my friend's network to offer coaching sessions in return for honest feedback and testimonials. What do you think about this approach and what other recommendations do you have to gain coaching experience? Well, a couple of things that I want to say, uh, say about that. Um, and again, I'm answering pretty much all of these things on the fly. So I'm going to do the best that I possibly can and, uh, and answer these things when it comes to this issue of practice or whatever, let me start by saying, uh, by saying this, no, what your end game is with anything that you are doing. And I know, because I've heard it over the years, a lot of coaches saying, well, I need to get practice. I want to get experience with people. First of all, I'd say this. When it comes to practice, when it comes to getting experience, know, uh, make sure that that's you, you know what your end game is with that. Because a lot of times coaches go out and they do some sessions with people to practice, but the real intent in their heart is, is that they hope that those people will become clients. Know what your end game is. So you need to define exactly what your end game is. And is it simply practice? And how are you defining practice? 
because a really big key of, of this whole thing when it comes to practice is the ability to be able to get results. And here's what I'll tell you. When, if you guys go out and you start practicing with family and friends, they are not going to get the results of a paid client. It just doesn't happen. So if you're trying to build your confidence because somebody's getting a result from multiple sessions with friends and family, um, they're not going to get results if they're not paying for it. You got to have skin in the game to get results. So practice isn't exactly like uh, working with a paid client because paid clients have skin in the game. They actually want something and they show up in a completely different mode. It's night and day. That's why I always tell coaches, free coaching never actually helps anyone. Um, you might get a little bit of feedback. It may not be qualified feedback and it may not be great feedback. The other thing is too, is that you always got to be careful with your heart when it comes to friends and family. Do they believe in you? Do they believe in coaching? Do they believe in what you're doing? Um, because, you know, they, friends and family, generally speaking, are not going to fit into your ideal client. They're never going. And so they would probably never be people who would pay for what you're doing. So putting yourself out there and practicing with people who would never be interested or pay or, or pay for what you're doing may not always be the biggest confidence builder that you could possibly do. Having said that, I would say that with anyone that you practice with, ask for uh, two things. So two ask. One ask, obviously, is going to be in the form of testimonials. Yes, you're going to get feedback, but you need to have an exchange. I would not do anything without an exchange. You don't have time to do free things as a coach. So there needs to be something that is exchanged. Testimonial, yes, they're going to give you feedback, but I would ask for two things. I'd ask for a testimonial. That way you can start placing those things on your website, on your social media, those kinds of things. The second thing that I would ask for is I would ask for referrals. Would you give me at least two people? Why? Because referrals are powerful and these are what I would call warm leads. Would you introduce me to two people? Not just give me their contact information, but would you do an introduction? If you find this beneficial, would you introduce me to two people who could benefit from what you've experienced here? That's the way that I would go about practice knowing what your end game is. So don't have your end game of a practice that I hope this person becomes a client. Have the end game of, I want to walk away with, and, and I'm going to talk to them about this on the front end. We've already, um, we've er already talked about that this is what the exchange is going to be. I'm practicing with them. They're going to give me, a, uh, give me testimonials, preferably a video, preferably a verified testimonial. You can get Google verified reviews through a couple of different sources. That way you get social benefit on your website, not just having it written on your website. But if you get Google verified reviews, which are easy to do, you can set up a Google My Business or something like that. And that way they're utilizing that mechanism so that what will happen is it'll show up on your listing for your business locally, but it can also be pulled into your website as well. And it'll be verified rather than, you know, some kind of a picture. You know, I know coaches like to use um, testimonials and I highly encourage people to get uh, to to get social proof and put it on your website. But a lot of times people, when they see things, they don't think it's legit. Use Google verified reviews. What happens is, is that when you get, uh, go use Google My Business, when somebody searches and they see, it'll literally have the ratings underneath the Google search. Also, it'll show up under the ratings for your website as well. That's how I'd go about it. Last thing that I would say about, about getting practice if you're a part of our program, whether you're in the Life Coach Certification course or you joined boot camp, you have access to other coaches to be able to get qualified feedback from them. So you can do your assignments with them, you can find a homework buddy, and you can practice with anybody that you want. Plus, Tuesday nights, which is a part of all of our programs, 
uh, we go, we do Tuesday night training. So we have a, uh, we have a training. We have some weeks that are all role playing weeks. We just did one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but there's at least two sessions out of every set, uh, every seven that we do. So at least monthly, we're doing just uh, just role playing. So you can come in and you can practice with people. So if you're a part of our program, then you can come in and do that, and you're going to get qualified feedback. You'll get it from me. You'll also get it from the other coaches who are there. Um, or you can actually pick a homework buddy, or just tell people, hey, like I want to uh, I want to find a a practice buddy or something like that, and you can work with them. That way you're, and you can get as many, and, and that's the difference is that sometimes you'll practice with people, but they don't know what coaching is. So their feedback isn't that great to begin with. So great question. How can I differentiate myself from other coaches in the market and stand out to potential clients? It's a really, really good question. Let me say hello to a couple of people and then I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to uh, answer that. Uh, Charlotte said, when will Tuesday night sessions be available tomorrow, every Tuesday they're available. So good. Rachel said that boot camp is great. Very good. All right, cool. So let me go back to that question that we were jumping into. How do I differentiate myself from other coaches in the market and stand out to potential clients? Whew, deep breath on this one. Okay. So how do we do that? Because I'm going to try to condense it as much uh, as much as I can. Standing out isn't about flash and about being clever. So to stand out is not to be flashy. So we don't want flashy and we don't want clever. That's not what actually makes you stand out. First thing that I would say, obviously, is that there is only one you. So for all of you, I don't want you to ever think about what you are doing in your business as competing because you are not competing for a limited number of clients or anything else. So competition's actually out of it because any coach me and anyone who's on this or anybody who's out there, well, it's not apples to apples. It doesn't even matter if we choose the same niche or whatever. It is not apples to apples. People choose you for you. There's a reason why someone goes with a particular coach versus somebody else. What is the determining factors that, that decide whether or not someone chooses one coach versus another. Well, let's talk about what some of those, uh, some of those big, uh, big ones are. First of all, we have to think about the fact that we are in a relationship business. So it's all about connection. Why? Again, because this is about relationship. People choose connection over everything connection trumps everything think about anything that you've purchased in your life think about what services that you have chosen that are a little more personal or whatever you'll choose connection over someone selling you any day of the, uh, any day of the week when i say selling i'm just talking about people who that's their end game is to sell 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 you're going to choose who you connect with not just features and benefits and flash you're going to choose i i what i trust this person i like this person so these are the factors that people are looking for i trust this person i like them and i see a certain level of expertise in them there is something in them that i believe that they can help me solve my problem that's what people are actually looking for. What makes you stand out is not the flash. It's not being competitive. It's not trying to emulate what other people are doing. What makes you stand out? Connection, a big part of it is going to be authenticity. Do they believe you? Do they buy into who you are? Are you the real deal? Are you consistently the same kind of person every time that we're, we're out there? Can sometimes you be vulnerable and be real? You know? When um, coaches see me just for Life Coach Training Institute, I am the same Paul all the time. I'm not hype. 
and I'm not exaggeration. Now I'm passionate and I love coaches and I love coaching, but I shoot straight. I tell people a very real story about my life. So a big part of connection is, well, your story, because your story, whether or not it actually relates to them is really, really important. No one wants to work with someone just because they have a perfect life. And this is what a lot of people on Instagram and different things do is that everything that you see, they will not. I know an influencer personally. I'm not counting on them watching tonight. Well, I, I actually know a few, few influencers personally. So now that kind of like makes it a little more vague. Okay. But there's one of them that I know that never, never, never does not look completely dialed in and perfect for everything that they do. Never are, will you see them, uh, you know, looking sick, you know, if they had a cold or, hey, man, things didn't work out or whatever. Uh, you know, and I think that there's probably some things if people are looking for certain kinds of products or whatever, maybe maybe can be, people can be done up all the time. But when it comes to coaching, what are we trying to do? Is that we're trying to tell a story. We're trying to be real. And part of that, part of the whole thing behind coaching is that it's step by step. We're coming in to fullness for our life. We're coming into our potential and we realize that nobody is there. One of the big points of, of connection is that they are able to see themselves in your story. They don't care about your story and they don't care about all of this stuff unless they can see themselves in you in some kind of way and buy into who you are because you're relatable. And maybe you're a, you, maybe you're a few years, maybe you're five years, maybe you're 10 years ahead of where they are. You need to talk about the giants that, that you've battled. You need to show your scars. You need to show some of those kinds of things. These are the kinds of things that stand out. One of the things that came out of 2020, if it ever did, was really no filter. Hashtag no filter. Everybody's tired of, of the fake and the phony. People want the real. Matter of fact, um, I told our coaches even this weekend, you don't really, as a coach, want to have a brand account. You know what you want? You want a founder's account. They want to connect with you, not with your brand. So we've got to, because co coaching is, we're in a co-equal relationship with a client, then that's what we really need to do, is that we need to be building bridges and we need to be all about um, building connection. That means that sometimes your posts, if you're posting on social media or putting something out on your website, you need to be relatable. People need to see you doing regular kinds of things. They need to see you eating at places that they would eat at. They need to see you showing up in different things. You know, not just pictures of you sitting on a fancy car or whatever. They need to see real. They need to see you in the dust and grime of life. Those are things that stand out because what is everybody else doing? They're doing glossy and beautiful and perfect and pretty and filtered. All these different filters and everything else. This is how you stand out in a world where everybody's kind of saying the same. You know, the other thing is, is that a big part of what we do in terms of, uh, of, of standing out is that we can have a two-way conversation with, for those of you who are using social media and everything else, why not have a two-way conversation instead of just being a talking head all the time? Why don't you go live and engage people who are on there? Why don't you ask them questions and engage? Why don't you find out what's most important to them? The other thing is, is that this is just on the relational side, but let me give you a couple more ideas on this. All coaching has a problem that needs to be solved. No one buys anything just simply because they want it. In most cases, people are trying to solve a problem and that problem's causing them discomfort or pain or whatever. So the more that you talk about the problem and the more that you show that you understand the problem and how your story connects with the problem makes you stand out because you know what people are interested in? They're interested in solving the issues or the desires that they want every day. The things that they are thinking about, not trying to educate, not saying live your best life. You know what people are thinking about? They're thinking about 
the nagging issue that they wish that they could solve. So what always gets someone's attention and what always makes somebody stand out is not simply their beauty or their filter or anything else. What makes them stand out is when they're talking about a problem that their ideal client wants to solve. And that always makes you stand out. That means that the problem needs to be talked about, but the solution that you actually have a solution and you can start talking and connecting in, in a serving kind of way makes you stand out rather than hiding all the solutions and always trying to sell, sell, sell. Remember, everything that you're doing is nurturing a relationship with people in everything that you're doing. If you're just a talking head and you're not busy nurturing a relationship, and when I say nurturing relationship, that means that in everything that you do, there is uh, consistency with what you do. If you're not consistent on your email list, that they're not hearing from you regularly, you're not posting regularly, and you just have a static website, you're not going to stick out to anyone. And one of the things that we do inside of our Jumpstart program is we actually help our coaches get really clear about who their ideal client is and to help them wrap an authentic expression of who they are around their coaching business so that they can find their ideal clients. That's what we do. I'll talk more about that in, um, in a little bit. What are the most lucrative uh, coaching niches? Um, all right. So let me see if I can answer this. And I'm going to answer it in a wider, broader answer than you're probably expecting. Uh, rather than just giving you a list of niches. I was talking about this this past weekend, uh, but this will be great for you to understand. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Everything that you see here is the base, that biggest part is what is needed most. And I would call these things down here at the bottom, level 10 needs. Uh, matter of fact, level 10 is probably going to actually extend. We can probably say that safety needs and physiological needs are level 10. We can probably all agree on that, right? So what are safety needs? Personal security, employment, resources, health, property, and then physiological needs, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. That's where that thing is going to be. When you get to love and belonging, it lowers a little bit, and depending on where people are at with regard to friendship, intimacy, family, and sense of connection with people, then for uh, for a lot of people, we're going to go anywhere between like six to nine. I'd give a nice little range that because some people have more felt needs for these things than others. Up here, when it comes to self-actualization and and esteem and all of this other stuff, you're really talking about, you know, one to five. So highest. Now, when we say this, I want you to understand something here. That means that the value of things that is down here has a higher value than the stuff that's up here. Okay. I want you to track with me on this because high quality problems equal money. Now, when you see this, almost every coach I know besides the ones we're working with, but almost every coach I know, they say they're a life coach. Where are they always trying to get business? They're always trying to sell, live your best life. That is the least thing that anybody needs or is thinking about every day of their life. Not only is it vague, but that is not going to be lucrative. You know why? Because people want to solve important problems in their life and they have to get all these other things taken care of before they think about self-actualization so yes you can be a life purpose coach just know that that in in listen any any um any niche is lucrative if you do it right 
the more specific you are in your niche, the more lucrative it actually is. The more general you are, the less lucrative. So if I just say I'm a life coach and I have no specialty, then I'm going to be making less money. If I specialize in anything, then that means that um, it's all automatically going to be more lucrative. You know why? Because it's going to open a big door to my clients. It's kind of like this. If you don't choose a niche, it's like going into a business park, you know, where they got all these buildings and here's a great business over here that can help me, help me uh, with a solution on a problem that I actually have, but it has no sign. So Coaches, even though a life coach could work with anybody and doesn't have to be an expert on any kind of subject matter, the more general you are, the less money that you're going to make. Think about it as doctors, right? So, um, you know, you can kind of look, you know, I ER doctors that don't make as much. They just kind of are in there and they do a lot of general kinds of things. And you know what you have to do? After you go there, if you, if you know, if you didn't require like something that they can do, they give you your x-rays or they give you your labs and they say, go see your regular doctor. We're just making sure that you don't die or getting you out of immediate pain, but they're not going to solve any kind of issue for you. Think about it with attorneys. If you were, uh, you know, gotten a really bad car accident and you were injured, you're not going to go to a generalist attorney. You're going to find a personal injury attorney. That's what we understand is that specialization automatically people expect for one, if they want to solve a particular issue, they're going to find someone who's talking about their problems and connects with them. And they're going to choose them over someone who's over here saying, live your best life, or I can help you with anything, right? So money goes with specialization. Any niche is lucrative, but money goes with specialization. Money goes with a high quality problem as well. And unfortunately, live your best life is not a high quality problem. It's not someone who's just kind of like waking up every morning and they're down in the dumps and they're just like, ah, I just want to live my best life. There's nobody doing that. But, you know, we had a brilliant coach a couple of years ago <clears throat> that she was a um, not just a parent coach and not just a coach for moms, but she was a coach for moms who yell at their kids. And they don't want to because they're shame and guilt. That is a high quality problem. It's specific, so that makes it more lucrative. That means that people who have that problem are going to go to her as opposed to going to just a parent coach. They're definitely not going to go to a life coach for this problem. They're not going to go to a parent coach for this problem. Maybe they will. But when they hear this message that resonates with an ongoing problem because guilt and shame is a terrible feeling. So I want to solve this issue. I'm not going to just go to a life coach and I'm not going to go to a parent coach. Maybe I don't even know a coach could even help me. But as soon as a, a coach talks about what this feels like and the cycle of it and everything else, now, you know what, I, 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 res, I resonate with this person and I, wanna, uh, and I want to go work with them and I'm going to pay more money to them because I want to get rid of this shame. I want to get rid of this guilt and I want to have a solution for this. So I'm going to go to it. So that's also, when you look at this, what's proof of that is you can see where does this live? It doesn't live here. It doesn't live here. It lives here in this love and belonging thing. What did I say? Is that these are higher quality problems. So it's in this and it's specialized and it's dealing with a, a real ongoing issue and everything else. That's why when you look at this, you can see some other things. So career coaches falling under employment, anything that lands under here. These are broad um umbrellas, by the way. I'm not telling you just to go for lucrative niches. Like, I just want to work with something. That was like me when I got out of high school and I, I went pre-med. And then after I got into the hospital and I realized that I had to work with sick people, I hated it. I'm like, I hate being around sick people. Well, that was a dumb idea, but I was going after the money when I gra when I graduated high school, got into a prestigious program. And then it was only then that I found out that I like, I hate dealing with sick people. So you want to work with people you're most passionate with because you'll always love your job and you'll always do your best work. Now, having said that, there are some other niches. I noticed that Harvey actually jumped on tonight. Harvey posted this in our group just a little bit earlier. 
Uh, so Harvey's on. I saw him pop in and say hello. Um, but I love what uh, what he was saying in this. Um, he's uh, he's talking about the vision for things uh, and and everything else. Um, but um, and and even though he's battled health issues, he's tripled his coaching business this year. We love Harvey. Harvey's an inspiration. Why I'm uh, specifically bringing this up is not just talking about coaches who are having success because Harvey's out there crushing it. Um, Harvey's also working with salespeople. He's doing sales coaching. And he understands because he worked in sales and then he retired from sales. And then he found out that retirement wasn't his gig and wanted to come in and learn, learn about coaching and everything. So he went from zero, knowing nothing about coaching and knowing nothing about getting clients online and everything else to absolutely crushing it. Now, the thing about it is, is that that is a lucrative niche. You know why it's a lucrative niche? Well, because we're over here in this realm that is basically covering safety needs and physiological needs because people need to make money. And he knows the pain points of all of those people. And I will say those people in a lot of cases have a higher net worth than a lot of a uh, lot of other people. So there's a lot of money to be made there. So anything that's working under financial relationships are massive. So anything, but any niche can be lucrative. You know, I know a particular coach um, that works with people who have been through betrayal in their marriage. Massive. And I didn't even think about that as a, as a big pain point, you know, because I haven't been through it. But is it very common? Yes, there's, pro there's probably up teen numbers of people. And, and that's the people that they're working with. So lucrative again, what did I say? Lucrative, anything can be a lucrative niche. But you know what you need to do? You need to niche, niche down and you need to specialize. You also need to niche down and specialize and get a pain point that someone actually wants to pay for to solve. And you need to verbalize that pain point really, really clearly so that they understand that you get it and also uh, and also that you can help them get a result. And also just understanding in this, in this niche that anything that is just self-actualization and is vague and ambiguous is really, really hard to sell and it's hard to get people to pay a lot of money for it. But anything that starts landing in these areas right here, anything from here on down is going to be worth a lot, a lot of money because these are the first problems that need to be solved before you can get to self-esteem and before you can get to self-actualization. Hopefully that was helpful for everybody. Um, let's see what other questions that we had in here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm excited about it. Um, let's see. What other thing did I see in here? Oh, maybe I'm caught up. Let me look on our chat really quick and see if there are any other questions that I need to answer. Um, good to see you. San Jose is in the house. Good to see you. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead and throw them in there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to pay the bills really quickly and then come back and finish with any other questions that are on here. For those of you who have not gotten trained and certified as a coach, the best deal that I can actually offer you, um, is our jumpstart program. It's only $97 a month with a three month minimum commitment. Some of you have not even gotten trained and certified yet. That is covered inside of our Jumpstart program. So Jumpstart is an all-inclusive training, certification, mentoring, and business development program. What we do is you start off the program by either taking our, our, our self-paced life coach certification course, which includes Tuesday night training, which is every Tuesday at 5 p.m., uh, that's also 7 p.m. Central. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. So I understand you guys are working 40-hour work weeks or eight-hour days. You can join us on Tuesday nights. We have training and we have live Q&As, and we also have role-playing so that you can practice with other uh, with other coaches. Um, that It also includes our boot camp. We just had one this past weekend. Our next one is going to be April 19th through the 21st. You start on Friday and Sunday, and you get all of your training uh, done in a single weekend. Now, 
You can also do this, the training self-paced. It's up to you. So we give you all these options, self-paced or weekly join us on Tuesdays, or you can go through a weekend uh, accelerated program and go through all of the training. Once you get your training and certification out of the way, then you can jump into all of the courses that are available inside of Jumpstart. One of those is Brand Camp. What do we do? We take you step by step on marketing messaging. We show you how to develop your website, how to do search engine optimization, how to write a sales page, how to write emails, all of those kinds of things. It is completely covered, you know, top to bottom on everything that you'd need in term uh, in terms of branding. We also have another uh, another course called the Coaching Product Launch Blueprint. And what we do in eight sessions is that we walk you through brainstorming and discovery all the way to launching a product or launching a course or launching a retreat or launching your coaching practice. We bring you through all of the steps. We have tools and we go step by step. And the best part of everything that we do in Jumpstart are really two things. With all of the step-by-steps that we give you, we take the guesswork out, but we also will give you feedback on anything that you're working on. So all you got to do is submit it to us, to submit it to our group. And what do we do is on Wednesdays, we have a group call. All of our coaches who are brilliant people will give you, uh, will help us in giving, uh, give, doing a look-see on anything that you've put together. And we'll give you feedback on anything that you're working on. And we'll answer any of your questions. You're ch having challenges with clients or if you need any help on business development. We've been really successful. Not only have I personally been successful as a traditional coach and an online business, but we've launched coaches all over the world globally who have been really successful. Again, the cost is only $97 a month with a three-month minimum commitment. I know you guys have been looking at training and certification programs out there. They range from $4,000 to $12,000 just to get trained and certified. And you get no business development help and you get no hands-on ongoing help to actually get started and get launched. Um, this is your answer. I'm not trying to hype anything up. Um, we understand. I was that coach who'd come out of losing everything in the last recession and trying to rebuild my life and everything else, and I had a lot of self-doubt. I understand those things. We come after your self-doubt. We give you great steps. And we also walk alongside you in these steps for as long as you need us. Again, it's $97 a month. There's nobody who's doing this uh, program's worth more like $10,000, but we're giving it to you for $97 a month. You can get this done. You can get trained and certified and get your business up and going in the next three months. That's what we try uh, We try to do. Charlotte says, is this help, uh, help available for as long as we need it? Absolutely. Or you can cancel after those three months, if but on, but you only keep us for as long as you need us. You know, we're not trying to pull people in dependency with us. We want people to come into community, to come into relationship, because we want you to be successful. So, um, there's a question about uh, creating coaching offers, and it's just too long of an answer for that because there's a lot of steps. But I will say this. We cover those steps extensively inside of our coaching product launch blueprint. We give you all those steps. One of the things that I will say is that we do have a um, coaching product launch blueprint uh, series that I did about a month ago. We did it at the very beginning of the year. Uh, so if you want to look for that, it's actually on YouTube and it's on our particular YouTube channel and you can also find it on our website. And so you can get some of uh, some of those bits of information to at least give you a sense of where we're going uh, going with those things. But I would say there's about eight steps that go from beginning to launch that we walk you through inside of the program. It would just be really hard to try to cover all of those other kinds of things. So cool. Well, great questions, everyone. Listen, I appreciate you guys all immensely. The link to actually getting uh, getting enrolled to get trained and certified is in the description of this video. So do me a huge favor if you have not already liked this post, share it, at least like it. It tells Facebook and YouTube that we're doing a good job. I try my best ne never to give you fluff, but to actually answer your questions as clearly and as deeply as I possibly can. Uh, you can absolutely do this. This is an incredible business to get into because it's full of purpose. It's full of meaning, uh, but you'll also break into financial freedom as well and time freedom. 
and we want to walk alongside you to do it. The link is in the description. You can click over. You can get enrolled and jumpstart in about 90 seconds, and you can join us for Tuesday night training tomorrow night. Listen, I appreciate you guys all immensely. Have a great rest of your week and take care.